Hi, I'm Darren. I can honestly say that I love my job, but there's nothing that I enjoy more than spending time with my kids. So join us as we combine rocketry with SolidWorks, 3D printing, and scanning, all in the name of fun. A few years ago, we started out building the kits you can buy. We'd glue them and paint them up. Then we'd finish it all off with a successful launch. Every first flight is a rush. But we've all had the experience of one clear downside. Uh-oh. Yeah, we're in trouble on that one. That's what happens, though. This year's strategy is different. Instead of spending $20 per kit, if we build rockets from scratch using common items, we can keep the costs down, freely customize them, and make dozens. Then if we push the height and performance limits a bit, and lose a couple of rockets in the process, it won't cause any lasting impact. We hand-built everything but the motor. More on that later. As soon as we were done, we headed for the field. Yeah! Nothing prepared me for the genuine excitement and joy from Kennedy when the first try was a complete success. Yay! Yay! Uh, it worked! We did it, man. We did it. We did it. Whew, look at that. Now these rockets were inexpensive to produce, but they use a D motor. And this is going to get expensive in a different way, quickly. This is a job for SOLIDWORKS and additive manufacturing. Now these rockets will be scaled down from the version of the randomizer. So smaller motors and a smaller bottle. Boy, do I have that covered. With my key dimensions identified, quickly sketch up the motor inside my 3D print constraints. I'm going to print this upside down and model it in a way to try and avoid needing supports on the print. I need to reference the motor and the bottleneck and I'm good to keep concepting. Nothing but the basics here. Some nice looking fins. And a launch guide sticking out far enough to clear the bottle and we're looking good. At this point, I've got my sights on making this build as fast and repeatable as possible. And one step we hated was grinding the threads off the bottle and having to epoxy parts together. I need to reach out to one of my Go Engineer connections to solve this one. Enter this guy, Dave Arena, one of our 3D scanner experts at Go Engineer. He was able to get me amazingly accurate data in a matter of minutes using a Creoform HandyScan Blue Laser Scanner. And the resolution on these scanners is just getting ridiculous, not to mention the ease of use. It was relatively easy to open the iGIS scan data in SOLIDWORKS. And after repairing a gap with import diagnostics, I was able to use it as a reference feature to create the corresponding geometry in my rocket. a little scale for clearance, and a simple cavity feature gets the job done. This will eliminate the most labor-intense and error-prone step in the entire design. A quick test print of the critical region, and in five minutes I've determined that the fit is still too tight. Another percent scale and a reprint, and in 15 minutes I've verified quality and accuracy for this step in my design. How's that for iteration? Now we can literally print as many as we want, complete with nose cones. And if we push the performance limits and lose a few in the process, well, no big deal. Problem solved. The flexibility of SOLIDWORKS also enables us to quickly make several configurations. It 
maybe even a version with a little bigger motor. Now that might be fun. If you don't have access to a 3D printer, you can always locate a resource through the 3D Experience platform and SolidWorks Make. Fill in just a few key details and the system narrows the list to the service providers that fit your needs. Just request a quote and you're on your way to a tangible part in as little as a day. As for me, well, we're headed back out to the field. Contact us at GoEngineer.com and we'll show you how it's done. I'll put a download link in the description so you can have this kind of fun too. Dang it! Whoa, the water's still in there! Oh, that's great!